Good evening. We begin tonight with vaccination rates that continue to climb around the country, but not so much here in Idaho. A little more than a half of our eligible population has been vaccinated. Idaho trails far behind the national average with one of the lowest rates in the nation. But one by one, more Idahoans are having a change of heart and choosing to get the vaccine. Our Katia Stepovic spoke with a local health care worker who just received the vaccine. And Katia, the vaccine has been out for for almost a year now. Why now? What was her change of heart? Well, Mark and Kim, I spoke with a physical therapist that has worked at St. Luke's for 22 years. She says she's used to being against masking, social distancing and the vaccine, even receiving a religious exemption. But something changed and now she's vaccinated. I was kind of skeptical. I didn't want to wear the mask and I didn't want to wear or get vaccinated. Kay Craig has been working in the medical field for more than 28 years. When St. Luke's announced they would require employees to get vaccinated, she was first in line to fill out a religious exemption. I just called on God and I wanted to just walk with him and, and be obedient. And mm -hmm. so then when the mandate came out, I was um, uh, again being told what to do and I really didn't feel like God was saying I needed to get it. He says to just wait. She says her supervisors were supportive of her decision. Life carried on, but so did COVID. I have a very dear friend in the ICU, and uh, it just caused me to think more. A month ago, Craig says she traveled out of town for surgery, and when she came back, she was in for a rude awakening. I didn't believe him when they said it was 98% or 96% unvaccinated. And so just through my own research, it truly is. I looked in the ICU today and it's 27 years old. It's 33 years old. It's 60 years old. You might get a 67 year old, but they're all young. I had another good friend and her brother-in-law died at 40. Craig decided she'd seen enough and received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It's not in the society's face, mm -hmm. but if we had an open window to what our doctors and nurses are going through down there. How do you feel a week after being vaccinated? Honestly, I don't feel any different than I was when I was unvaccinated because I was just following Christ. I have peace. I had peace before, I have peace now. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are other religious people in your family. You have probably yep. religious friends. What do they think about your decision to get yeah. vaccinated? Yeah, it's funny. Um, there are some, like my parents, they never said anything to me, but now that I'm vaccinated, they're like, because, um, you know, you worry about your kids. Craig knows she wasn't the only person in this position, so she has a message for other people who are in a similar religious predicament. Anything is even said at church, even if it comes from the pulpit, you got to still have a personal relationship with Jesus. you got to read it for yourself. Yeah, they went to school for that, but they're human too. Doctors are human and everybody's human. And so do your own research and believe it for yourself and have faith for, for yourself. She says while her choice to get vaccinated is a personal one, the choice to protect our neighbors should be a community wide commitment. It is a journey and a process and we are in this together. And the more we can come together and help each other, it's going to get over faster because the hostility and the anger and fear is killing us too. Craig says seeing younger and middle aged people dying from COVID really put things into perspective for her to get the shot, mainly so she can still be there and around for her son. And Kim? we should point out that she came to us with this story idea, mm -hmm. wanting to voice what she went through in hopes of maybe other people following what she's done. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And she said she's not truly a vocal person, but she felt like someone might relate to this story she yeah. had to tell. Well, we thank her for speaking out on this. Thank you, Katia, for telling her story.